Hi. In this slide, I want to talk at sort of a, the, the next stage of, a, of an ongoing case study where we're kind of going bottom up on a stealth basis and top down uh, with letters to the vice president supply chain and then kind of a full hyper creative assault on the Stonewall buyer. Um, so after nine months of, of full court pressing um, and, you know, during this time, the Stonewall buyer would see us per company policy uh, maybe every six weeks, uh, but there wasn't a week that didn't go by where we weren't sort of sending something to this guy in the mail to help get help this guy be better at what he was doing. Because right away in one of our, our survey questions was, what are your key performance indicators? At the end of the year, how do they decide whether you've done a good job or not? How can we help you? you know, ease your job, your strain, your stress, and help you look like, you know, a better player. We're not, you know, we don't want to come out here and compete for big chunks of business where you're you're happily moving along with existing suppliers. We're looking for uh, little pieces of, of crumbs and problems and issues that maybe nobody's covered, and we can help you with those. So we didn't want to sort of waste each other's time was kind of the, the philosophical approach. Well, after sending, you know, a letter a month into the vice president's supply chain, it turns out nine months down the road, we find out that the, that, that the big hitter sales rep who enjoys the copy paper business and a lot of other stuff too, he and his very competent son-in-law partner are looking for local warehouse space. They represent a distributor in a nearby city and they wouldn't be able to maintain the copy paper business on an outsource, deliver local basis and hit a local warehouse. So you know, knowing that these are the facts of life, when I heard this rumor, I said, well, carpe opportunity. Uh, when you hear something like this, you've got to do whatever you've got to do from a focus, persistence, creativity, and energy effort to seize the opportunity. So if this is a porthole in a wall, is it lucky or did I make that luck? I think after nine months of time, we made that luck. Um, but how how are we well and and when that opens when when you hear this rumor most people would say oh that's interesting well you know i guess companies open up new locations all the time what's what's the big deal as opposed to no 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 i think we were the catalyst for it i understand what's really going on behind the scenes and do i have the credibility to do something about this new shift so with the motto of do whatever it takes, I called up the son-in-law and said, let's get together a little secret conference of competitors. And I want to talk to you about your warehouse thing because I've got a much better alternative. And I suggested that basically what they might do is consider merging into our business. The son-in-law could actually be our general manager of this distribution center because he was that competent. Uh, and the fellow we had was really, uh, you know, a, a vice president of product specialty, you know, and, and so it, he, he could have a, a corporate level job that would work out. So everybody's going to be fine. Um, and that led to a summit meeting with my, my, my honcho boss and, uh, and the big hitter. This older, mature guy was a fantastic sales guy. And basically the big hitter and his team, you know, left their existing company and moved in us like a mini acquisition merger and then they switched all their business go back and see my slide on gunslinger brokers type of thing although this was not a gunslinger kind of guy but a huge broker um, and over time i guess the buyer <laughs> that was the stone wall actually got put in the penalty box uh, we didn't look bad at all uh, and this big, this big gazelle corporation wound up outsourcing a day's dollars about fifty million dollars worth of third-party logistics supply contract to us. In other words, we got the copy paper, but they said because you have this new model, why don't we just ship all the stuff that went to central distribution, and you can ship it out to these thirty-five locations around, uh, you know, our hometown here, type of thing, uh, and we'll just charge third-party fees. So it was a it was it was a fantastic, uh, you know intergalactic score the moral of the story is um, anybody not anybody but a lot of a lot of sales reps could be a 10 if they just took all their time and spent it on very few bigger better net present value potential customers and work collaboratively with a brain trust of people at the at, you know on their side of the fence did constant seed planning uh, were ready to seize opportunities when they came along and so forth but this is not the normal uh, 
MO and structure of a sales rep. Sales reps have said, you know, get more accounts, uh, spread your risk over more customers, as like all customers are equal. But on a net present value, net profit basis, one gazelle is worth, you know, a thousand or two thousand, you know, active accounts. They just are empty activity. So it's through the hyper focus and the full court press and the seed planning that these kinds of opportunities come along, but then you have to seize them creatively. So that's the end of the story of uh, that particular stealth operation. Thank you.